I think today is going to be a very exciting day. I think maybe we're going to have to get one of our teachers to do a little bit of a handstand. If we do win, get to the four to the five thousand. I see Liesl's laughing. It's going to be you. Okay, guys. Today, please remember to chat to us on Facebook. That's facebook.com/learnextra. Also, chat to us on Twitter. That's at learnextra. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. I can ask Liesl. I'll say, hey, Liesl. I don't know. She's not understanding so well. And then we'll stop and we'll try and, and figure it out. But at the moment, um, we are moving on. Let's go, Liesl. Okay, guys. So we're going to start with the classification of matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a big classification. And then we're going to get more and more detailed as we go along. So firstly, we are going to classify into either mixtures or pure substances. Now, Indiana, I wonder if you can tell me, do you know the difference between mixtures and pure substances? Well, I'm guessing a mix would be a combination and pure would be something at its base form. Am I wrong? <laughs> Not quite. Now, guys, what a mixture is, is if we take two things, and it could be anything, it could be popcorn and Smarties, and we mix it together. Those two things are mixed, but they still have their own physical properties, very, very important. So they still have their own physical properties. If I take out a Smartie, it's still going to taste like a Smartie. And if I take out a piece of popcorn, it's still going to taste like a piece of popcorn. It's not going to taste like a popcorn Smartie, right? So mixtures is when we take two things and we mix them together. Very, very important. No chemical reaction takes place, nada, nothing. We're just mixing the things. The properties remain the same, right? And there is no fixed ratio. Like for instance, if I take a little bit of mayonnaise and a big blob of tomato sauce and I mix it together, that's a mixture. If I take more mayonnaise and less tomato sauce, it's still a mixture. There's no fixed rule for it must be so much of this and so much of that. Now, Indiana, now that you know what a mixture is, could you perhaps give us a couple of examples of mixtures while we wait for our audience to start tweeting us? Any kind of mixtures. Any kind of mixture. So we're talking about like not just Smarties and popcorn. Like not just Smarties and popcorn, not just tomato sauce and mayonnaise, what else? Are we talking about food or in general? So if I had to say a mixture of Let's say, what happens if we had to do like Coca-Cola and, and and Fanta or a yeah. milkshake? Yes, yeah, that's a Let's mixture. Let's do a milkshake because that could be quite interesting. That's definitely a mixture. A milkshake is, of course, a mixture between ice cream, milk, and whatever flavour you choose to put into it. Right. So now that we know what a mixture is, let's think of some other examples. If I take a spoon of coffee and I put it into a cup of hot water, I mix it up. That's a mixture. Now, before we carry on, what we need to now just talk about is different types of mixtures, right? Now, if I think about the popcorn mixed with the Smarties, that is one type of mixture that I can get. And then if I think of the coffee that I dissolve in hot water, that's another type of mixture that I can get. Now, I want you guys to think for me, what is the difference? What is difference be different between the popcorn Smartie mixture and the coffee water mixture. What do you think, Indiana? Um, the coffee mixture is mixing it with a, a, a substance like water. A you know substance? what the big difference is? <laughs> with the coffee and the water mixture, I cannot see the difference between the coffee and the yeah. water anymore. Now, a mixture such as that is called a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. I'm going to use shorthand. Of course, we know that homo means the same. So examples of homo homogeneous mixtures would be coffee in water. Um, even the milkshake, if you've blended it up properly, you can't really see the ice cream and the flavoring and the milk as individual things. So those are homogeneous mixtures. Then we get a heterogeneous mixture. And an example of a heterogeneous mixture would be, of course, 
my popcorn and my Smarties. I can still pick out the popcorn and the Smarties. Right, so let's quickly make a, a homo homogeneous, sorry, a very difficult word, and a heterogeneous mixture. I'm going to go over to the desk over here, and I'm going to take a bit of copper chloride. Now, I don't want to really put the cool. big chunks in because they so might not dissolve. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, not last time I did it, but the time before that, there was a bit of a bang. With See, it. now this is quite cool because we haven't really ever done this on a live show before. So, mindset is you're seeing, you're seeing a first. All right. So, what I'm doing is I'm mixing, mixing, mixing. Of course, you guys will know that if I were to heat it up a bit, then this process will happen much quicker. But if you have a look, you can see that I cannot distinguish between the copper chloride and the water anymore. Okay, so they haven't reacted. They still have their own physical properties. They could still be separated. Right. Well, Ashvia wants to know, um, is sand and salt a mixture? Sand and salt is a mixture. And I wonder if she knows, or he knows, whether it's a hum homogeneous or homogeneous mixture or Should a I, heterogeneous mixture. Should I ask them? Let me, let me, let me, let me ask them. Ashvia, some sander. I'm going to ask you um, what kind right, of mixture. We might and, then, and then we'll get them to write back. Good. So that, once again, you can see I can no longer distinguish between the water and the copper chloride. Right mm. now, um, Indiana, if you'll pass us a blank piece of paper there, I'm now going to make another type of mixture. And this mixture is very similar to the sand and the salt mixture, of course. This is exciting. So what I've got in this little bottle over here is I've got iron filings. So these are fine little pieces of iron, and I'm placing that onto the piece of paper, right? Now, I'm taking some sulfur. We don't want any of the big chunks. We want the smaller bits. We have somebody being very funny. Remember, remember guys, um, sorry, Indiana. I know, I'm a science teacher, so I know that neither of these things are toxic. But if you're playing around in the lab, gloves, please. Yes, what's happening? It's very, very funny. Um, Kalon, he wants to know if alcohol um, and, and, and Coca-Cola is a mixture. That is a it's mixture. Definitely. <laughs> it's definitely a mixture. And does he know what type of mixture it is? You better write in. Write in and let us know. OK, I'm going to take just Came a little on. bit more sulfur over here. Let's have a look. Sure. Right. Yeah. And I'm mixing it, and I'm mixing it. Now, the sulfur and the iron are not reacting with each other. And this is, Indiana, why I told you not to be too nervous, because we don't have a chemical reaction going on here. Yeah. All that I'm doing is I'm mixing two things together. But now, I said to you guys before that one of the properties of a mixture is that I must be able to separate that Should mixture I, let me just tilt again. It a bit. Let's have a look and see if you guys can see it there. Can you see it? Producers, are you doing a nice little close-up of our little mixture? Hmm? Okay, holding it nice and slowly for you guys. Yeah, Kalon said, um, with alcohol, now, now he's changed his tune, because, I mean, obviously, kids should definitely not be drinking alcohol. Not while wa watching our show, or, especially, or, or at or all. Until they're over the um, age of 18. Guys, seriously, mindset is. But um, he said, what about alcohol and water? Is that a mixture? Because his teacher said it was a hetero mixer. It depends on whether, the, whether you can still see the alcohol and the water. Now, I would say a better example of two fluids would be if you take oil and water, where you can still, even if you shake it up, the salad dressing, you know how you have to shake it up before you, um, before you put it over your salad, you can still see the little pieces of oil in there. So that would probably be a better example. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I can separate this mixture of mine. So what I've got here is a piece of paper and a magnet. Now what will happen is 
The reason I'm using a piece of paper and a magnet through the piece of paper is of course because I don't want all of these pieces of iron to cling to my magnet forever so I can't use it. Can you guys see that on this piece of paper is mostly just iron now? But ha look at what happens when I take the magnet away. It falls right back. So this is one method for separating a mixture Guys, what you must do if you're doing this in the lab at school. And look, can you see, Indiana? Oh, iron, separated. sulfur, and okay. separated. Completely separated. Now, this one is easy to hold up because, of course, the magnet keeps That's it amazing. together. Right. Very impressed. And remember, guys, if you're doing this at a lab at school, um, not to ruin your equipment, take the magnet, put it either in a plastic bag or do the separation story, um, do the separation story through a piece of paper so that you don't have all those fine bits of iron clinging to your magnet into all eternity. That would be really, really unfortunate. Right, so let's just think of another couple of examples of each type of mixture. Under hetero, what about a fizzy cool drink? That is a mixture between what would you say, Indiana, or do any of our tweeters know? What the mix, what? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically, guys, referring to phases. So with phases, I mean solid, liquid, and gas. Two of those phases are involved, or maybe even more than two, in a fizzy drink, and what would those be? Should we ask them? I think we should ask okay. them. Okay, okay, we're going to ask them, but then they need to get back to us, and then would you be able to wait one or two we'll minutes? We'll wait for a, we'll wait for a, for a little bit, and yeah. let's think of another homogenous mixture, or um, let's say our copper chloride in water. Okay, so now while we are waiting for, um, for you the guys answers. to reply, Let's just quickly s summarize what we've learned about mixtures. Right. If we have a mixture, two things are mixed together. It could be two gases. It could be two liquids. It could be a gas and a liquid. It could be a solid and a liquid. But the most important thing that we need to remember is that no chemical reaction takes place. Right? No chemical reaction takes place. Nothing changes the individual properties still remain intact, like I showed you guys with, with the iron filings and the sulfur. I mixed them. Yes, it was iron and sulfur mixed, but I could separate them again quite easily. So no chemical reaction, there's no fixed ratio, and it can be separated, then it is a mixture. Then we get a heterogeneous and a homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous is is when the two things that are being mixed can, can still be distinguished. Like, for instance, a box of Smarties thrown into a box of popcorn. Homogeneous would be copper chloride, anything that dissolves in water. Um, a teaspoon of sugar dissolving in hot water would be an example. A teaspoon of coffee dissolving in hot water would also be an example. Answers. Okay, so for hetero, for the fizzy drink, we've got from Pearl, she said liquid and gas. She is absolutely right. Yes. Absolutely right. And Siobonga. Siobonga came in straight afterwards and said, fizzy drink, there is liquid and gas. Now we need to move on to our pure substances. And our pure substances can also be broken up into two different categories. Now I wonder if you guys want to start thinking what those two categories are. Now remember just the umbrella. It's either a mixture or a pure substance. Right. If it's a mixture, there are all the other options that we spoke about. Now, we're looking at the pure substances, and we want to know from you guys, what can we break the pure substances up into? So let's start with pure. Now, I don't know if any of our audience is quick enough for us. We have two main branches that we can break our pure substances up into and those are of course elements and the other one is compounds.
Now, before we can go ahead with the classification into either elements or compounds, I think it's really important that we know what is an element and what is a compound. Right, so think for us for a little bit. An element and a compound, some definitions. What are things looking like over there on our Facebook and our Twitter page, Indiana? Or is it getting too hard for yeah, them now? No, 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 they're good. Um, I just want to say um, what's up to Andile. He was on yesterday, and I, I can always tell these things, like when mindsets are going to become um, staple and every day, you know, coming every day. So Andile, you were here, ye here yesterday, you're here today. Well done. Guys, if you were watching yesterday and you're watching today, please say hello. Um, also, also I get very lonely in the corner here while Liesl has fun teaching you guys. I'm here to chat to you. I'm here to let Liesl know any of the questions that you guys have. So let's do it. Um, yeah. Okay. So the definition of an element. An element cannot be broken up into smaller bits, right? An element cannot be broken up into smaller bits. So examples of elements would be all of those lovely things that we find on the periodic table. Sulfur is an element, carbon is an element, and so forth. Okay, so elements cannot be broken up into anything smaller unless we go into the subatomic level, but an element is the smallest particle. Right, so we, we can look at our examples, we can say, well, what about maybe sulfur? That's an example, and carbon. So that's a fairly easy one. And now that you know what an element is, it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out what a compound is. A compound is when two or more elements react together chemically to form a substance with totally new properties. Now that is what makes a compound very, very different from a mixture. In a mixture, we added two things together, but you guys could see I was able to separate the iron and the sulfur again, the properties of the iron and the sulfur remained intact. However, if two, if, if two chemicals, two or more chemicals, react together to form a compound, there's a chemical reaction and the properties of that compound is completely different from the elements that it's made up of. Like for example, if I react carbon, with oxygen to give me carbon dioxide, which is incidentally what we use to get the bubbles in our fizzy drinks, this carbon has a set of properties of its own. The oxygen has a set of properties of its own. Now what I'm talking about here is what it looks like, what it smells like, how reactive it is, and so on. And the properties of CO2 are completely, completely different from the properties of the carbon and of the oxygen. Right. So what, what is it looking like in the Indiana? Have we got any, anything, anything more? Well, we do, actually. Are you ready for it? Um, it's a little bit off course, but I think it still has to do. Um, Kutso Makata wants to know, um, homogeneous is when the substance is in the same phase. Heterogeneous is when the substance is a mixture in a different phase. Can I ask what is centrifuging mixed, mixture? I'll have to get back to her on that one. I'll have oh, to yeah. think about that one. Okay, okay. Um, listen, Kutso, you've put us into a bit of a naughty space. We shall get back to you on that one. Um, we'll write back on the page. Okay. But keep the questions coming, guys. Okay. Now, seeing as we're busy with our classification, we can classify our elements a little bit further as well. If we look at a periodic table, what you guys should notice is to the left of a periodic table, we have all of our metals. On the right hand side of the periodic table are our non-metals, right? So elements can be further um, classified into metal and non-metal. Now while we're on the topic of metals, let's talk a, a little bit about some of the properties of metals. Metals are usually shiny, right? They have a nice luster, which is what makes them so attractive. They are ductile and malleable, so we can play around with it. We can heat up metals and make, draw it into strings and um, hammer it into thin sheets and so on. Also, metals usually are very good conductors of heat 
and very good conductors of electricity. Right, now, metals can be even further classified into um, metallic, oh, sorry, magnetic, and non-magnetic. So let's move over to our desk and use our magnet to test whether a couple of things are metallic, uh, magnetic or not magnetic. Right. Next slide. Hopefully I'm not magnetic, right? Hey? Well, I don't know. <laughs> not unless you have a steel pin in your leg somewhere. Oh. Right. Now the first, the first metal that I'm going to test is brass. Or oh, is this brass? I'm not even sure. But what do we say, guys? Metallic or non-metallic? Definitely metallic. Definitely. Then over here, I have got some lead. Metallic or non-metallic? Uh, I think that one would be a non- Metallic. Uh, Non-magnetic, non rather, and magnetic. So the test to see whether metals are magnetic or non-magnetic is very easy, we just need a magnet. So what we're going to do now, seeing as it looks like if everybody except Indiana understood matter and materials, <laughs> sorry, we are now going to move on to the different phases of matter. So of course, you guys must know that we've got the three phases of matter, gas, liquid, and solid. Now, what I've got over here on the board is a little animation. Um, I've got all these little molecules bobbing around on the board. An orange with two whites. Now, that, guys, is H2O. It's water, H2O. So the two white things are my H's, and the orange little ball is my oxygen. Right, now, what I've picked here on the side is my gas button at this point and that is why these guys are wildly running around. Um, yes there are forces in between them but those intermolecular forces while they are in the gaseous state is very very weak so they are able to move around very freely. Now let's have a look at the activity on my screen when I start cooling these guys down. So I'm going, I'm um, see how cool the ice comes up and what I want you guys to notice is as I cool these guys down what starts happening is that their movement becomes slower and slower and slower and they they start huddling closer together so once I cool my gas down what happens is they move slower they move a lot slower so the intermolecular forces between them are able to keep them together until they become a liquid. Now, if you look over look here, this is what a liquid would look like, obviously, if you were able to see the individual molecules. They are still able to move around because, as we know, when you pour a liquid into a cup, it takes on the shape of that cup, but their movement is a little bit less erratic. They are much, much closer together. Um, so that's what we have over there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool this glass of water down even further to make it into a solid. And can you see that now my molecules are vibrating close together, right? Um, now, let's think of the difference between water and ice because we are dealing with H2O here. If I take water and I pour it into a glass, the water takes on the shape of the glass. If I take water and I pour it into a bowl, the water takes on the shape of the bowl. If I take ice cubes and I pour them into a glass, do they take on the shape of the glass? No, they don't, because the individual molecules are vibrating much, much closer together. The intermolecular forces between them is a lot stronger. So let's go through this process again. There we have ice, that is solid water, vibrating close together in a rigid form, strong intermolecular forces. Right, moving on then to liquid, moving around freer, the intermolecular forces is not as strong. 
the, AR, the, the liquid is able to take on the shape of the container that it is in. And then finally, gas, and things are going wild over here. Right. Obviously, the state in which, well, we, we've used water or H2O now as our example. The state which we are dealing with, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas, depends on something. Indiana, do you want to venture a guess to try and redeem yourself? Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. Come I on. Know. I don't know. How, how do I make, what do I do to water to turn it into a solid? And what, yes, so what am I playing around with? The temperature. The temperature. You see yes. What, I'm, I, th I think I get, you know, I'm, I'm one of those students, you know, in class when, when the teacher goes, hey, you, and then I go, <laughs> and then I can't answer because I'm in the spotlight. I'm one of those. So I'm like, and Claire. Okay. Yeah. Put so, it in the fridge. <laughs> so, so, so definitely um, the main thing that we need to have a look at is the temperature. Now, I don't know how much time we still have, Indiana. Do we have any more time? Well, I'm having a look at my clock, which I think is a little bit fast. I'm guessing we've got about three minutes. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit more about our phases of matter. I'm going to just extend this page over here, extend it some more. Right, so we said we had a look at gas. You can take a little bit more time. We've got about six minutes. So you can do a six minute diagram. <laughs> gas. <laughs> and we've got liquid. And then we have solids. Right. Right. Now, I want to know what do I call the process where I go from a solid to a liquid? Now, that is a very ugly diagram. I need to hold this pen a bit better. So, if I want to go from a solid to a liquid, any ideas? Heat it up. Hmm? Heat it up. Yes, but the process is called melting. Melting. Right. I'm telling you, if the mindset has watched this now, they've got such a good head start to matric, hey? They'll know I everything. think so. Grade 10 is very, very important, guys. It yeah. really is. Okay, and then to go from liquid to gas, let's think about that. Um, if you take a bottle of nail polish, polish remover, and you leave it open for a day. Have you ever noticed that by the end of the day it's virtually empty? It evaporated. It has evaporated. Ah. Very, very nice. So let's see. I am listening now. Now, now I can't, guys. I'm, I'm busy. I'm not. It has evaporated. <laughs> okay. Now, Indiana, seeing as you're doing so well, let's talk about the reverse processes. So if we go from a gas to a liquid, what do we call that? You go from a gas yes, to a liquid. What's the name? Mm. I know. I know the principle. So, like, like a gas. I suppose like rain, like a cloud. Rain. Yeah, but but no, no. From from a gas to a liquid. So let's say you've got your kettle is boiling and you're holding a glass against that kettle um, where the steam's coming out, right? What's going to happen is water's going to run down the glass after a while when it hits the cooler surface of the glass. Yeah. And that process is called condensation. Oh, see. Condensation. Sorry about the crude, crude diagram. And then finally, if I go from a liquid to a solid, what do I call that process? Well, and that process. I'm hoping because because every time Jürgen Govinder he keeps saying to me melting evaporation. So I'm like Jürgen, quickly, quickly type in quickly. So, but we we've all done this, guys. You know what? When you're sitting in an exam and you feel like you've you've forgotten what it is, what this particular word is, just think about it in an everyday situation. If you take the ice tray in your fridge, you fill it up with water, and you go and put it in the freezer, what are you doing? You are freezing it. Oh, so it's actually really, really simple. There's no tricks. There's no tricks. Bye.